A lot of the modern development tools for FPGA development have done away with schematic capture, and I've had a few comments asking how to connect modules together in code. In this video, I'm going to use part of the CPU from the Create a CPU from Scratch series and show how to create a module that contains other modules and how to connect the various input and output ports together to create a new higher level block. Hello and welcome to 100 Random Tasks. I'm your host, Philip Lett, and if you like what you see here, please give us a like and leave a comment, and subscribe if you want to be notified when more videos are uploaded, and it would really help the channel. I'm more someone who prefers things when they're drawn out. A picture is worth a thousand words. You can quickly see the interconnects. Using the outline of the CPU from previous videos, it's easy to see how all the individual blocks connect together. But in some instances, you might want to do this all in code. So I'm going to take the ALU, Accumulator, and flags register and combine them into a new Verilog module. Here's what that will look like. I've redrawn the three sub-modules with their connections showing all the inputs and outputs to the new module. On the input side is the clock and reset, accumulator load and flags load, the 2-bit ALU select lines, and the 8-bit data bus. The output is the accumulator and the zero and carry flags. These will be defined when the new module is created. One important aspect is that the new higher level module must explicitly define any internal only wires. That is, any wires that connect one sub module to another but do not enter or exit the higher level module. In this case, there are three. The 8-bit ALU result that feeds the accumulator and the Z and C flags that come from the ALU and feed the flags register. All three must be defined and we'll see how in a bit. I've created a new project and set the top level to use HDL in this case, and made sure that the preferred language is Verilog. Then I copy the ALU, register base, and flags modules, as well as the pin constraints file. Next I'll add a new Verilog source, and in the input output dialog, I'll add the IO from the outline we just looked at. With that created, we have to set this file as the top level. As mentioned earlier, we now have to define the three internal wires. Now we are ready to connect the modules together. The format for this is the source module name a unique name for this particular instance, the source module IO port name, and the connection that it goes to, either the top level IO port or an internal wire or empty for no connection. And you carry on for every port from that point on. Starting with the flags register, I'll connect the four inputs and two outputs. You can see that the dot C in and dot Z in are connected to the internal wires. The clock and load are connected to the input ports and C out slash Z out are connected to the output ports. If one of the source module IO ports are unconnected, then you can leave it out altogether or leave the connection in the brackets empty. This would be the preferred way. So you can see at a glance that there is an unconnected port. With the flags done, I'll create the ALU and accumulator connections.
and that's it. All three modules are now connected and ready to use. The beauty of this process is that you could now take this block and make it part of another higher level block similar to how you can create a schematic block and add it to a higher level. In this way you create a hierarchy. Before we can test out the newly created ALU section, the pin constraints needs to be updated, which I'll do now. To save us from having to put pull-up resistors for the input switches on the test circuit, there's a handy command to add to the pin constraints that will enable onboard pull-ups for us. The asterisk here says that all pins with that name get pulled up. There's one last thing I have to do before implementing this. It turns out that I made an error in the ALU. If you look at case 3 for the COM A instruction, it says to set the internal to exclamation mark A. This is actually the operator for a logical knot. In other words, it turns the result into a true or false, 1 or a 0 result. What we want is the bitwise knot. The operator is the tilde character, so that needs to be changed. We also need to consider the carry bit in this case. Internal is 9 bits in width with bit 8 being the carry bit. When this operation is performed, we want that bit cleared. To do that, we can concatenate the 0 with the result like this. With that fixed, now I'll implement and generate the programming file. Next, I'll wire up a test circuit with switches on the inputs and LEDs on the outputs. On the left is the 8-bit data bus input, next to that is the 2-bit ALU select, followed by the carry bit, 8-bit accumulator output, and zero flag. The three wires on the top right are the accumulator load, flags load, and the reset. I'll leave all three of them tied high since we want to see the changes on the outputs when the clock is cycled. First, I'll load the accumulator with 80 hex by setting the input to 80 and the ALU select to 01 for pass-through and cycle the clock. 
Now the output shows 80. If I now change the operation to add and cycle the clock, the sum of 80 and 80 is 100 hex. So the carry flag should be set, the output should be zero, and the zero flag set. Exactly as expected. Everything appears to work. Let's check the updated complement function. First, I'll set the accumulator to AA in hex. Both flags are off as expected. Now if I select complement A and cycle the clock, it should read 55 hex. There it is. Again, both flags off as expected. I hope that this short demonstration clears up how to put your modules together in code instead of a schematic. Some people like myself prefer to see the connections and others can work just fine with a code representation. Use whatever method works best for you. In future videos, I'll be using code for some connections, including this new ALU block. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get notified when I upload new videos and it really helps the channel. If you are already a subscriber, thank you. Your support means a lot. And if you like what I do here, consider becoming a patron to help me make more great content for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.